Hi, this is Ann Carico from It's Not That Hard to Homeschool, formerly Annie and Everything, and we're here today to look at the CTC Math Parent Portal. Now, if you want to be looking at the student portal, I do have another video that goes behind the scenes on that, which you can find on my YouTube channel or on my website. Also on my website, you're going to find a full review of CTC Math and also a second article that compares CTC Math to Alex, which is another online math curriculum. So definitely keep your eye out for both, all of that. <laughs> but for now though, let's go behind the scenes and take a look at what you as a parent have available to you when you choose CTC Math. And here we are on the home screen inside CTC Math. This is the parent portal. You can see that I have logged in. You can also see that there is one student. I made up a student name. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's my name, but that's okay. Annie is now the student versus Anne, who is the mom. Okay. So what you see here is that you have access to a lot of information. On this page, for instance, you can see the activity of your student. You can see that Annie signed in today at 2.07 got an 81% on the diagnostic test at 227, viewed a lesson, got 90% in that lesson and signed out. That's what Annie, <laughs> me, did earlier today, me as the student. Uh, you can also see that there's plenty of contact information very easily seen, so you don't have to go look for it. And the fact that when your subscription is going to expire is also there. One thing that is really cool is that you can switch to the student view. So if we do that, it's just a view. It's not your student's view. It's just what the student can see. Now we're actually in a kindergarten lesson here, but you could potentially go through some lessons. You could watch the video or which automatically plays apparently, or you could go through the questions. So any lesson you have access to, okay, there's one pencil, submit. This is what your student sees. Again, this is kindergarten, not high school, but you can view what your student is seeing at any time. So if they've got a problem with a lesson, instead of looking over their shoulder, you can pull it up on your own device, or you can, uh, I don't know, review math for yourself if you want to. There's any number of applications for being able to see exactly what the student sees. Pretty cool. But we're going to return to the parent view. And here's a couple other things to notice. Um, you could log in as your student on your device. I don't know what the application of that would be or from this parent portal. I'm not positive what that's going to do for you, but it's there as an option. So that's kind of cool. Let's view the profile though. This is helpful. Here we can see exactly what Annie has done at any given time. Um, and it's saying the detailed report is empty because I've got it under kindergarten. Annie did not do her work in kindergarten level. She did it in algebra one. So you do have to show that there. You can see the diagnostic test that it showed on the other page. You can see the one lesson that I did tells you what I got on the first. <laughs> I, the student, what the student got on the first attempt, what their high attempt was, how many attempts they did. Obviously, if I had attempted this more times, then it would have shown different numbers here, how long it took to pass and what date this was all on. Very nice detailed report. Sorry, scrolling a lot. I didn't expect that to go that far. There's also a summary. Again, we've got it on kindergarten. You've got to make sure you are on the level you need to be on. And then this is kind of a nice graphic summary of how many lessons there are in each section, and how many the student has completed. The fact that this student got an 81% on the diagnostic test means that they could, in my household, go ahead to the second section, which is why Annie did that. That is a feature that you can edit for the student at any time. You'll see that I've set a passing grade for 80 
So that means that my student can keep moving forward as long as they are achieving at least an 80 on their work. But the neat thing about CTC math is that you can decide for yourself what you think the passing grade should be. You can do that by coming up here to edit student. And here is where you can determine exactly how many attempts you want your student to have before they get a solution. And also you can change the passing grade to whatever you like by editing that there. I think that is amazing. Some people want their kids to be getting 100s all the time. Others are okay with A's and B's or even C's. You can reduce this down as far as you think makes sense for your preferences for your kid. It's not something that is determined by CTC Math. They let you be the parent on that, which I love. At the beginning of every large section, there is a diagnostic test. So you can get your kid to take that test and if they get past a certain score, they can skip that section. Pretty cool. And then tasks are something we'll look at in a second. These are things that you specifically assign to them, whether lessons or question banks or whatever, for a particular time frame. And uh, we'll look at those in a second. So those are all the reports. Here's a nice thing. What it says up here is some reports have an edit mode. That's what these pencils are for. Reports that have the pencil are editable. In other words, you can reset some of the grades. So if your kid just absolutely bombed and needs to kind of start over, you can reset back to nothing and they can, they can do things again. Individual results, what does Algebra 1 say and how is this different? Okay, um, I guess this has to do with the lessons again. And then, yes, lessons. And then diagnostic tests. Again, it's under kindergarten. Let's look at algebra. There we go, same thing. Oh, let's click on report. See what that's gonna show us. There you go. These are the questions that were on the diagnostic test to show which type of problems your kid needs to work on versus which ones they don't. And uh, there are three types of diagnostic tests, short, standard, and long. Annie took the short one, but still got three wrong. Now I will say that the division of fractions question, I tried to get wrong, but these two, I did not try to get wrong. So I was really glad I came up with an 81%. Um, so yeah. Very nice to have this detailed report, which you can download or print. And then question banks. These are going to be, I believe, additional question banks that you assign to your student. We'll look at those in a minute. There's awards. I haven't earned any yet, but that's okay. Speed skills. So you can assign these to your kid and they're always accessible down at the bottom of the page. History. Okay, no unfinished questions found and timeline. This is kind of the um, summary of what was on the previous page, the home page. Export means, hey, let's uh, get a spreadsheet going of all of this information. Love it, love it, love it. So that is what is under, golly, how did we get there? We got there from the profile of the student and then all of these lovely tabs right here. Okay, back to the home page, your dashboard, if you will, as the parent. Uh, here's another place where it's gonna show whatever awards. Here's weekly reports. Um, these are emailed to you each week. You can turn that setting off if you want. And then here's a copy of them. It says they're stored for up to three months so that you can look at them there if you need to. Tasks are very helpful. This is for those of you who want to be able to actually plan out which lessons your kids do each particular day. Like your kid can just work through CTC math in order without necessarily having things, you know, how much they need to get accomplished each day planned out. And they just keep working and working and working. Or you can assign tasks. So this task date that I'm about to assign is, uh, I guess for today, but you could assign it. Let's just start on Monday. 
and I'm just going to apply that. And then um, I'm going to add a lesson. And now it's giving me the choice of a lesson. My internet is slow, y'all. There we go. The student can choose between the online questions or the worksheet or, hey, I want my kid to do them online or no, my kid is going to do the worksheet. That would probably be me. Uh, student needs to attempt all questions and reach their passing grade. Yes. Or just, hey, attempt all questions. Not sure how you learn math when all you're doing is attempting and not necessarily passing. But down here again, we got to choose algebra in order to get the right lessons listed. And then now I'm going to choose this lesson, order of operations one, and that's what's going to happen on Monday, the 17th of January. And I can save that task. And now it is assigned to my student for Monday and they will receive the information about that being due and it all is taken care of inside this platform. I love it, love it, love it. So you can add, you saw in there that you can add question banks or you can add a diagnostic test or the lesson, however you want it to be done. Another thing available to parents is the question bank wizard. So this would be if you want your kid to have further practice in something. I love this. So you can give it a title and then you can select lessons. Again, we don't want all courses. We want algebra one. So let's say they need a new question bank for a given lesson had trouble with order of operations. So we're gonna add a new question bank for that. Here's the lesson. Now you can preset how many, see the lesson is still selected. That's where the questions are gonna come from. You can pre-select how many questions you want to have. You can decide how to distribute the difficulty level. And now it's going to generate these questions. Look at that. And now you can save the question bank. There is a way to customize it advanced. What would that be? Oh, I guess you can uh, decide how many questions of each level. Wow, this is really specific. I'm a fan. I don't need to change anything, but you might want to. We're going to save the question bank. Oh, I have to enter a title. Uh, sample, just because. That's easy. We're going to save the question bank. And it says it's been saved up here. And we're going to assume that it's going to be there. There we go. And now I could assign this at any time. There's edit, there's delete, there's print, there's clone. Ooh, cloning is nice. Now, back on tasks, I could add this question bank to my student. So actually, let's edit this particular one. Oh, I clicked on the edit mode. Here we go. There was a pencil on the back that I should have clicked on, which I didn't. Oh, edit task. Now we're going to add a question bank. Select from the list below right there. See that? And now the sample question bank has been added to that day as well. So now they do the lesson and in this case, they're going to do a second question bank, but obviously you would do something that makes more sense than what we just did. I'm just showing you the capabilities and we've saved that task. And now their kid is, your kid is going to see what, that there's multiple things for them to do. So that's what the question bank wizard is. Then under tools, You can browse the lessons. This is basically going to be a listing of all of the lessons and the topics that they cover. So if I go to algebra one, oh, not geometry. Then it's just a listing of all of the different lessons. Now uh, we can export things. This is really cool though, the checklist. So there is a checklist for algebra one. Let's show you what it's going to look like. This is helpful for 
if you just like paper and pencil more than doing things on computer. So this is something you can print and then write on with paper and pencil. Pretty cool. So I like the checklist. Let's see, is there anything I missed? I think the one thing I missed was there was a thing, maybe it was here. There we go. Add weekly revision set. So you can make your kid do a, um, I guess it's only for elementary. You can make your kid do a weekly review every week, all year long, uh, or from this point forward. And that's pretty cool too. I will say as well, just to finish up that the setup is so super simple. <laughs> All you need to do is follow the instructions in the email that they send out. And it's a very simple setup to get your students set up and to get yourself set up. So don't let that intimidate you in any way. And of course, there is always help available if you need it at all. And so there is the parent portal for CTC Math, which to me covers everything you need. All righty. I hope you saw there that that has everything you need in the CTC Math parent portal, that there's nothing else you could possibly need in order to effectively supervise your kid's math learning. You can get as hands-on as you want to, or you can leave it up to them for independent learning, which is great for high school. I hope this has been helpful to you. I'll see you again next time.